I've been very critical of Ambernick products for a good while, and I believe that it's been for a good reason. Now the competition is just too strong in the current market. However, there is a new market that is now beginning to be tackled, that being more affordable Windows handhelds. And with that said, Ambernick did jump in and gave their take on what a Windows handheld would look like. So introducing the Ambernick Win 600, is it really worth it? Well, that's complicated. Let's dive right in. So first and foremost, I would like to give a very special shout out to the Retro Handout podcast. They didn't ask for this. I just really wanted to thank them in a more meaningful way. I mean, it was thanks to them that I was able to get a review unit for the Win 600, and I can't thank them enough for their help. They run a really cool podcast that I was part of for an episode, so why not stop by and check them out? Links to their channel in the description, and you'd really be helping them out, but you would also be helping me and helping my buddies out. So I would really appreciate that if you went ahead and gave them a listen. The exterior design consists of plastic for the entirety of the build, for the exception of the display, of course. This is a pretty chunky device as it kind of needs to be in order for the thermal solution to work properly. You're also going to find some grips around the back and while they are hardly pronounced at all, I think that they get the job done for the most part. On the front, you're going to find the full set of buttons that you're used to seeing on Ambernick devices, plus a Windows button for getting back into the Windows menu and a home button, which largely remained unused. The buttons feel just like how you would expect Ambernick buttons to feel, very solid, with a gritty texture to them and solid feedback when pressed. The thumbsticks, however, could have used an upgrade considering that this is a more serious gaming device and a larger one at that. So these flimsy Joy-Con thumbsticks are not ideal and the positioning is certainly awkward here. This configuration will leave you reaching for either the top of the device or the bottom, which makes it difficult to use for FPS games. On the top, you're going to find your shoulder buttons, an exhaust vent, a reset button, a USB port, and a USB-C port. The triggers are digital and not analog, but frankly, I'm fine with that, and since I still kind of like how these buttons feel, I really have no complaints about them. I think that they offer a good amount of feedback for the most part. So I really don't have any qualms with them, to be completely honest. They feel pretty good. On the bottom, you're going to find your stereo speakers and the headphone jack. On the right, you're going to find mouse to controller, toggle, switch, and a keyboard button to trigger a keyboard within Windows when needed. On the left, you're going to find a recessed volume rocker and a sleep-wake button. So I understand why these buttons are recessed, which is so that you don't feel them or touch them by accident when you're holding the device, but based off of my own experiences with their RG552, I'm scared that after enough presses, the buttons will just sink into the device itself. So I think that there could have been a better solution for that somehow. Then finally, on the back, there is going to be a fan. So what do I think about this device in terms of the exterior? Honestly, I like it. I like how it looks. I find it to be pretty comfortable to hold, but that's mostly as long as I stick to either the top or the bottom of this device. And when gaming, because of the layout. And sure, it's kind of a heavy device, but I don't mind it at all. I like the build too, so I have little to complain about here. I like it, but I would have changed the button's layout without a doubt. This device features an almost 6 inch 1280 by 720 IPS display which is fully touch enabled. This display looks pretty good to me since it's not too saturated and the colors are definitely more tamed, but there is nothing wrong with that. I think that they did a pretty good job with the screen and the resolution is no higher than it should be. Considering that this definitely can't handle the games that I would want to get a Windows handle for. So a lower resolution like this works best. So this is only a 60 hertz display, which means that you can only play games at up to 60 frames per second. At least it won't show more than that, which is again, perfectly fine for a device like this. I also really dig the blue bezels here as I do think that it looks really good. I like it and I hope that this trend continues with Ambernick moving forward. But the speakers are far from good. They are stereo, bottom firing speakers, and they do not sound very good at all. They sound quieter than speakers on almost any other Ambernick device, which to me is absolutely crazy. The speakers are an absolute disappointment. I have a comparison ready here with the RG351MP and the RG3552, respectively from Ambernick, so that you can hear the difference. So have a listen.
In terms of specs, I have the top of the line model, which if you get the blue one, then that's exactly what you're going to be getting. So this comes with an AMD Athlon Silver 350E CPU, AMD Radeon RX Vega 3 GPU, 16 gigs of DDR4 single channel RAM, and a one terabyte M.2 SSD with a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. So these specs are definitely underwhelming, at least on the CPU end and the battery being as small as it is. Windows needs more power than Android, and the components that this device comes with also require more power, so battery life will get shot down by all of these factors. However, I'm actually more interested in the performance, which, which we're going to talk about pretty soon. So this device comes with Windows 10, but I have upgraded it to Windows 11 by now, and obviously, no matter how you slice it, you don't really want to deal with a desktop OS on a handle like this, unless it's stocked with a keyboard and mouse attached. So don't get this expecting to have a fantastic Windows experiences really it's just a means to an end we get windows so that we can struggle to download the programs that we need to play games and then hopefully never touch it again which is exactly what i've done and while you can definitely emulate a lot of stuff on this device today's video will only be on pc gaming as that's what i care about the most when it comes to a windows handheld but if you're planning on only using steam with it then just flash steam os onto it and call it a day Embernick actually has a tutorial on how to do this properly but i wanted to play epic games games as well so i stuck with windows now let's move on to the actual games now i'm going to talk about gaming performance and i will be separating my thoughts into three different categories low-end games mid-range games and high-end games i will explain in greater detail what I mean by low on games and the like as I move forward with these. So just know that for all of these, I kept the TDP at 12 watts since that appeared to be the sweet spot for me. When it comes to battery life and performance, since both are pretty critical in, in this situation. Now let's go ahead and talk about low-end games, which consists of pixel-based games, PlayStation 2 games with PC ports, and the like. So let's begin with something very simple like Final Fantasy VI, the Pixel Perfect remake. So this game will obviously run very well on a machine like this with zero stutters or issues to speak of. This is not a demanding game at all and runs as beautifully as you would expect. At this point in the testing, I wasn't too optimistic because this game is a very easy one to run, and honestly, it does look fantastic on the Win 600. And thankfully, the controls work best for this kind of genre of game, so I had a fine time. I think that games like this and most D-pad based games will play the best here because of the ergonomics of this device. So next up is going to be Octopath Traveler, which is another pixel-based game, but with 3D elements to it, making it a beautiful hybrid. If you haven't played Octopath Traveler and you're into JRPGs, then you have to give this game a go. On PC, it can run at 60 FPS and it looks absolutely beautiful. While on the Win 600, it does look beautiful and performs pretty well. I was a bit disappointed as it would run at around 30 FPS instead of 60 FPS at a 12 watt TDP. There aren't any stutters or any performance issues per se, but you won't get the full PC experience here because of the frame rate cap that you can't do much about. However, this is still a fine machine for Octopath Traveler if this is what you wanted, very similar to what you, you would get on the Switch, to be honest. Next is Persona 4 Golden, which gives me a lot of the same feelings that Octopath Traveler did on this device. It runs very well and it's absolutely playable with no stutters or performance issues to speak of. I really enjoyed my experience playing Persona 4 Golden, but this game is also supposed to run at 60 FPS and it doesn't on the Win 600. So I'm not a huge fan of that, considering that these games are relatively lightweight to run in general, so this device should be able to manage 60 FPS on these games. But you won't get that frame rate here, so keep that in mind. It's almost identical to playing this game on the Vita, except that you can play it in HD. So it's for Oblivion. So this is actually a 360 title. This game runs at a perfect 60 FPS, I would say. It's incredibly smooth, but I could get footage of this. But Kingdom Hearts 2 runs beautifully at 60 FPS on this device. So I can also strongly recommend it for that game too. Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. So this is actually a 360 title. This game runs at a perfect 60 FPS, I would say. It's incredibly smooth, but I could not get the controls to work properly in this game, regardless of which controller config I used within Steam. So while I would consider this game to be unplayable because of that, I've seen other reviews where Oblivion seems to be fully playable. I probably screwed something up, so I would still give it a try and see if you can get to control it properly. But this will run Oblivion really nicely, and I wish I could play it here w without much tinkering. Now let's get into mid-range games, which mostly involve 
PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, you, you know, games from that generation. So let's begin with Dark Souls Remastered. This game runs at about 30 frames per second, which is a little bit disappointing. Settings are as low as they can be, and the game does feel slow to play on this device, but it's certainly not unplayable, as I am inclined to believe that my heavy armor wasn't making me move slower than usual. However, this game was a little bit difficult to play because of the slowdown, but I have to say that the game does look very good still. Next is Final Fantasy 13 2. This game really pushed the PlayStation 3 at the, t at the time and it still pushes this device as well. The game ran at slightly under 30 FPS and while it looks good and all, it does slow down during certain moments. So I'm not fully convinced that I can play through the entirety of this game on this device. You will also notice that there is some choppiness and sometimes it does run smoothly enough, but this game does push this device further than it's meant to be pushed considering the hardware in store. This was the case for every Final Fantasy game after 13.2 as well. Normal 13 runs, but there is a lot of shaking outside of battle, so I decided not to showcase it here because it looks pretty terrible, but I will be showing you another example later. And finally for this section, we have Dragon Ball Fighters, which is actually a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One title. Title. So I suppose that I lied a little bit at the beginning, but this game runs fairly well. When it comes to loading animations in the intro, it does slow down, but when you're in battle, it almost reaches full speed. It almost works as it should, but I would still consider it playable for sure. Fighters isn't the hardest game to run, but it's not the easiest either. However, it being a 2.5D fighter, it should be handled decently by this device. And that was still true at the end of the day. So Fighters is playable at 720p low settings, but there is some input delay, so I would not recommend this for competitive players. Finally, this is the high-end section. In this section, games will barely run for the most part. They run, but rather poorly, and I would consider them to be unplayable, but I show these off so that you can get a better glimpse of the limits of the Win 600, even at the highest end. So let's begin with Final Fantasy VII Remake. It doesn't look so choppy on video, but believe me, it was. The choppiness even made Cloud a little bit hard to control most of the time, and this is running at 720p, the lowest settings possible, with everything possible turned off. I would consider the experience to be too choppy for it to be acceptable for playing games like this, so I would not get the Win 600 for a game that's this recent and this graphically intensive. The same was, I would say, if not worse, with Final Fantasy XV, but I decided not to showcase it here since it would be somewhat redundant. Next is Dark Souls 3, which does run pretty slow, but it was the best performer out of the bunch. It's slow in the movements and also in the frame rate since it's clearly running at below 30 FPS. And while I managed to beat the first boss with all of these issues, it's because I've beaten this boss numerous times at this point, so even this performance dip was not going to stop me. But yeah, it does chug with this game, and considering how pixel perfect you have to be most of the time with this game, I simply can't consider this to be playable in good faith. But just because it runs, it doesn't mean that you should run it essentially. And the final game in this showcase will be Doom. I expected Doom to run better because of it being a Vulcan title, so it should work best with AMD hardware. Unfortunately, Doom chugged like crazy as it ran at below 30 FPS. Everything was turned off and dropped to the lowest settings to accommodate this device, but even then, Doom is just too much for this system, and while I'm surprised, I really shouldn't be. The 3050E is not a particularly strong chip, so this is probably just asking too much out of this device. But if you were curious, playing FPS games on the Win 600 is not recommended. Look at how difficult it is to aim with these ergonomics. I have to hold this device in such an awkward position to reach everything that I need, and it's not very pleasant to use like this. I also quickly wanted to mention that there were some games that just wouldn't boot, such as Nier Automata, Bayonetta, and a couple of other ones, so not everything will be accessible here either, just because it's running Windows. Now when it comes to battery life, I would say that it hasn't been too bad with us getting maybe somewhere between two to two and a half hours, which for Windows handheld isn't too bad. Obviously, I would have liked more, but I understand that battery life is something that really needs to be worked on with these handhelds in general, not just with the Ambernet. So, we have finally reached the conclusion of this video, and with it, I have a lot to say. I actually really like the look and size of this device, and when I got it, I considered using this as my daily driver over the Steam Deck because of the size and the overall design, so I downloaded as many games as I could onto it. But for the games that I really want to take with me on the go, I simply can't justify the Win 600. It has its limitations, and at $475, it is a tough sell. 
However, I also wanted to address the people who would just dismiss a lot of advantages that this device can offer by just saying, just get a Steam Deck. Whether you like it or not, the Steam Deck is a behemoth, and it's not that easy to travel around with it. It's really big. It's a much better performer, but it's really big, and not everyone wants that kind of experience. So just accept it. The Win 600, in spite of the price, will be a great device for playing those indie titles that are only available on PC. You can emulate a bunch of stuff on this device too. So if you're into emulation, I would look into it as well. But the form factor to me is the biggest selling point and if you want something to play those low to mid-range games but easier to travel with, then I can recommend the Amber Neck Win 600 exclusively to you. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do very much appreciate it. Um, I am going to be leaving links to where you can get the Win 600 down below. They're not going to be affiliated. Uh, they're going to be straight from Ambernick, so if you are interested in getting the Win 600, maybe a different configuration or a different color, then yeah, like, go ahead and just go for it. Or you can just look it up yourself too, if you prefer. Now, I also wanted to say that there are other channels and other avenues where you can find me. So you can find me on Twitch streaming usually on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And you can also find me on my Instagram. But you can also find the Tech Summit podcast, which is going to be linked down below. I like to post on there usually on Fridays. And I do have a vlogging channel if that is something that interests you. Now, with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching. And until next time, have a good one. Good night.